Okay. May I start? Yep. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Luka Hruška. I work so, so for SUSE like for, as a kernel live patching developer. And the topic I would like to discuss today is uh, cable support for KLP relocation generation. Now, uh, why do we even need some relocations? It's because live patch is not some standalone isolated module. It needs to reference some symbols and also in, in case of having uh, ex exported symbol, we don't want to be dependent on some module. We, we just want to dependency on the VM Linux itself and that's all. So the symbols could be global and even the exported one in, in case of the modules and even non-included local symbols. Now, because of the call sims lookup name function was uh, already unexported, we cannot currently resolve this uh, issue by our own in the live patch module itself. And the only way how we can solve this currently is the module loader's uh, special format of the ELF for those uh, live patch relocations, which uh, requires uh, some non-trivial modification to KO file. So it's not possible to do it just from the source, file, source code or just using the uh, object copy tool. And also because we need to do those modification after running the mode post, we need to modify the mode post itself to skip under uh, like allow unresolved symbols in case of we are running it on the live patch module. Uh, now, uh, to better understand the next slides, we will first take a look on the known relocation in the user space and compare them to the expected KLP, uh, live patch relocations, where in the user space we have some sections with some specific prefix RILA, and then after that we have the uh, section name where we want to do those relocations. Then there are those entries where the offset is the offset inside the file in the binary where we want to do this relocation and the symbol name, which should be uh, solved during the linking time. Uh, the live page relocations is really similar. Uh, there we have a bigger prefix where the KLP indicates that this is a section which is going to be resolved by the uh, kernel live patching. Then there is the RELA section and section name, which is absolutely the same as with the user space. And only thing which is more uh, there extra is the object name, which indicates uh, the name of the object uh, which we are trying to live patch, which is using those symbols. So that way the module loader will create the not notifier and after loading up this module, it will do those relocations itself. Then those section entries are also similar, we have this prefix KLP same, which is the same as the KLP prefix in the section name, just indicating that this is gonna be resolved by kernel live patching. Then object name, which indicates where the symbol we are trying to look for is located in which object. Then symbol name is same as the user space and the extra which is there is the symbol position because we might have multiple sim symbols with the same name. So we need to specify which one we want. Now, uh, to solve this, there is a proposal for the tool called KLP Convert, which history starts in 2016. Uh, it was sent by Josh, where we have a macro uh, KLP module reloc, which is moving the tagged structure to section with specific, specific name which then the tool looks for <clears throat> and do those transformation on those uh, data. <clears throat> the mod was modified in a way that it's keeping all unresolved symbols <clears throat> in case of finding a live patch string in mod info. Then there is a uh, version two, <clears throat> which was sent in 2019, where a uh, functionality which is able to automatically resolve uh, the relocation symbols on its own was introduced and also in case of having multiple symbols with the same name there were uh, it, it would print out all the possible in information about the symbols and their positions so you can then specify it by the macro KLP symbols manually. Then version 3 to version 7 didn't in, 
uh, introduced some new functionalities. It was just uh, solving some edge cases, bug fixes, and styling. And now we have a minimal version, which Nikolai Sange proposed for in the version 7. And uh, it's based on the version, uh, version 7, where I just removed the automated uh, KLP Rela creation, like the automatic unresolved symbol resolution. resolution. Uh, there is a, another K, a macro, KLP Rela symbol, which uh, creates, uh, which, which uh, not renames, but uh, yeah, it, it aliases uh, the tagged variable by the format you can see there, where the KLP Simrela is a specific prefix which the mode post now only allow as an unresolved symbol in uh, if in case of having live patch module then we have the lp object which is the module we are trying to live patch same object is the om object which contains the symbol we are looking for the same name is the name of the symbol and same post is the position of the symbol in case of having multiple of them now there is an example that how does it work you just simply append this macro after the definition of the, of the variable, uh, which then creates this uh, Rilla symbol with all the format, which I already described. And after running the KLP convert, it is in the expected format as we, we looked for before. Now, some discussion. So one of the questions would be why this tool is still not upstream. Then also uh, is the minimal version, uh, which I sent last last week is enough for everyone. Uh, also, what is what would be the future of those self test in case of not having it uh, part of the cable, or at least part of the up, upstream. And if we should, uh, if the KLP convert should be part of the cable or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think the reason it's not upstream is it it just right now it has one user or one potential user. Um, I think so. Just one user. Why do we all need to support it? You know, I'm not against KLP convert. I did write the original version, um, and maybe that's the future like converge patch you know, thing that we were talking about, patch creation tooling. So, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if, um, if I think the big thing that was missing for me was the documentation on how to do an end-to-end live patch that's not going to blow up occasionally because of intra-procedural optimizations that you missed or whatever, right? So that whole, like, end-to-end -end process for me would need to be documented in the, in the kernel tree so that here's how you make a live patch using klp convert then for me that would be enough yeah okay i understand i'm not in disagreement so but i think that one of the advantages oh, oh i'll start differently so um currently we have this relocation infrastructure in in the kernel which is not tested at all it's just tested only by, by you and, and KPatch, if I understand correctly. Mm. Uh, I think that this minimal KLP convert tool would at least allow us to have self-tests for exactly this. So, so suddenly we would, we would be able to test it even in the kernel properly like we do with all the other things we, we provide as part of, of the infrastructure. So it's not like I mean, I, I see it's that suddenly we move, with this minimal version, we move from something which might be part of the whole live patch creation process to something which is enough to, to use as part of our testing infrastructure and also can be used later or by you. I, I guess that, that would be my other question. Uh, if this is something that you can migrate kpatch on since this is really minimal. So you would just use, because if I understand cor correctly, you currently use some kpatch relocation section uh, to gather everything, and then you just generate it properly. So maybe you 
could use this not to generate these, but you would have those special macro thingies. Possibly. And yeah. yeah, so which might be also beneficial for you that suddenly you would not need to maintain something which is out of three. Mm. So those are my two points which this might be now ready. And we sh maybe it's not needed to wait for this whole big thing. Just my two cents. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not awkward, but Josh, I think I would probably echo his point to the self-tests. Mm -hmm. um, I think we recently had a patch set from Song, right, to uh, I think clear KLP relocations. Um, and as the person I had to test it with kpatch, it would have been a lot easier if we just had in kernel um, self-test that could do that. I think yeah. they were part of some of those version three to seven improvements that were made. Is, is the self-test uh, immune to intra-procedural optimizations or? No, no. Okay. <laughs> it's just to drive the kernel API. It's not. So it could, in theory, it could in theory uh, blow up and it wouldn't be necessarily a bug in KLP converter. Right? Theoretically, yes. But if we're careful now, because I mean, the, the whole software, so the module is really of a limited scope. So that's not like something which lives in the wild and you use every day in your, in your mm -hmm. production life patches. So we have it under, under control. So we, we might use, well, the worst thing which might happen is that, yeah, it will be, it will be influenced by some of these uh, IP optimizations, which are not, let's say, allowed, but maybe we can just disable them using function attributes or something like this, and we don't want it. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, it's not ideal. Okay. But uh, one, another concern I have is that, I, I mean, I agree it's a great benefit to have the self-test to test KLP reloads. But a worry I have is that people will see the self-test and say, oh, how do you build a live patch? They see the self-test, like, oh, look how easy it is. You just use KLP convert and you just, it's so easy. And then they do it and they, you know, it blows up in their face after they've used it for several months, they're thinking this is how you do it, then they get that IPA and, you know what I mean? It, it gives a false, a false sense of security or safety. I, um, okay, so I'll have Petro reply, but I, I think about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I think yeah. that, we, yeah. <laughs> or that we definitely could make it like it would be nice to have all this infrastructure to make it more safe to create live patches. But the question if it ever will be like that, that we could automatically detect that some, some things can be live patched a safe way with, with what we have. Uh, I, I mean that. Uh, is, is for example k patch like error proof uh, like that it can pass any anything oh, yeah. yeah yeah do you mean k patches makes it look like it's safe if you just put any patch into it yeah yeah that's a valid point yeah yeah, yeah. like yeah so live patching is not like something to be taken casually that's a, that's a good point um, actually, there's a, for the live patching, we need to disable the, uh, a lot of IPA optimization for the program first, right? Yeah, we, in TCC, we have, a, we add an option to, for the live patching, especially, that's a, a dash F, yeah, I, I, I added yeah. that one. Okay. So I think it's yeah. already disable all the interprocedural optimization that uh, interrupt with uh, live patching. Yeah, so <laughs> that's what SUSE uses. Okay. Um, but for K, for K patch, um, mm -hmm. we, we do a binary diff. Uh, okay. So we're not, so even if there is an IPA optimization that the patch affects, then we'll just patch both the caller and the callee so mm -hmm. that it's not an issue. Yeah, but yeah. it yeah. shouldn't be an issue, right? No. Mm. So there's an issue. So 
if we if we when we enable minus f live patching mm. it breaks obj too because suddenly many more unreachable warnings appear and we are not really able to fix them so you I mean, mean you cannot generally use, you cannot use the live patching option no what's what's so, sorry could you repeat it please so what, what what do you mean when you add the live patching options or what what kind of issue okay so the, the thing is so that when you enable this this option it disables some of those let's say dangerous optimizations yeah and then uh with the when the kernel is built then some obj to warnings appear because suddenly the code is a little bit different mm. and there are some unreachable warnings of obj to and uh -huh. We don't have a generic solution for that. Uh, what we do mm. is that whenever we have we, whenever we upgrade the kernel for our enterprise Linux distribution, uh, we just go through those warnings. I just say, okay, so there's nothing suspicious because those are really false positives uh, g given by by this option. Uh, but that's just, just like not not ideal as well. So. We live with it, but okay. there are more issues. To it. Yeah, so I wonder if we could collaborate and look at those. Maybe it doesn't quite, um, some old optimizations aren't like completed, so it leaves some instructions so, that can't be executed. And so OBJ tool flags that, so maybe we could look at improving that. Yeah, that might be some facts. So I think, hmm. yeah, if you can file a bug on that, I can take a look to fix whether the Live patching option can fi fix this kind of situation. Yeah, mm. yeah. And there was another concern we had with F live patching mm. was that we have config live patch enabled on some distros, mm. but many users don't don't use it. So the perf what would be the oh. performance impact for those who don't who don't need? Yeah, that? that's quite some uh, performance impact because it's mm. disabled yeah. most of the IPA optimization. Yeah. Right. But if user really want to enable the IPA optimization, then we cannot do live patching, right? We cannot do live patching because most of the IPA optimization will uh, interrupt the live, live patching. No. <laughs> I, I don't think that most of IPA optimizations are disabled because we disable something like IPA RA, because which is clearly uh, in line, dangerous. Yeah, I think the most important thing is in lying. So, yeah, but that that's not mm. disabled. Okay, so it's in lying is the most important optimization. Yeah, it is, but mm. it's not disabled. Okay, so there are two options. Uh, yeah, minus F live pitching in gets yeah. inline clone or something, mm. and it, and we use the one which doesn't disable inlining, uh, uh, constant yeah. propagation, uh, uh, SI and stuff like that. That's still there. So it just disables some cross, really limited cross scope. Line. Yeah, crossfire in line, we need to disable it. Yeah. I think the, there's a two level of the option. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, I, it's, so the performance impact is not that bad because uh, well, the kernel is uh, a different thing that most of the user space. Yeah, kernel, does. So I, it I doesn't use so, uh, so many weird, let's say weird, uh, optimizations <laughs> because we, we use different weird optimizations <laughs> yeah. But, yeah i, I remember kernel kernel's performance seems not rely on the cross file in line too much yeah so we have some data before to see whether disable cross file in line how much the performance impact to the kernel looks like it's okay yeah yeah we we did some measurements uh way back and it was acceptable. I don't. I don't remember anymore. But uh, it's like really. But if you do see any issue with the live patching option, then just file back. File back on GCC. Yeah, we'll take a look and fix mm. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Carlos. Would you want? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I thought you. I love this task. I'm here to make sure that if it's anything that we can do, we can tool fix it. Do you want? Yeah. No, I, I, I'm just watching and listening. Um, I'm here just to hear if there are any tool chain issues that you think need to be fixed. But I want to echo just file bugs. If it actually ends up being instructions that are unreachable, why are they there, right? Like, we don't want to admit them either on the compiler side. So if you can file what it, the, the thing 
the thing that got admitted and why you don't think it should be admitted or even just a warning. So mm. it, it makes sense. So yeah. Yeah, because th this goes to the whole big topic of fixing those unreachable things. So it's not like, I mean, not only for life patching, but for object flow generally, because mm -hmm. there's currently no, if I'm not mistaken, there's currently no way to do it properly because we, we have OBJ tool has, has a list of, of functions which are then ignored. These are reachable so that, you know, we mark them as false positives, but basically, and that's it. And it would be nice to have something generic, but that's. Yeah. Oh. Bunch of those, I know OBJ tool has worked around for. I know on ARM64, we've got potential issues around no return functions and ambiguity for unwinding. So I think there's probably good scope to have a talk about exactly the shape of issue. Not necessarily now, but yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so now, now, okay, so there are more questions, of course. So, um, yeah, uh, the last one, should KLP convert be part of KBuild? Uh, because currently it is, it, it's always been. But that's also a possibility now not to have it because I, I think that the that cable integration part is the scariest one. Um, so it's, the, there's also a way to, to call it manually basically on, on, on the result. So that, that might also be a way I don't have an opinion, Joe, if you want to. Repeat the question really quickly. So the, the question is whether we need to preserve the scale, the, uh, this cable integration or Yes. Um, <clears throat> keeping it in the kernel build, I mean, it seems most convenient in one place. Um, I suppose nothing stops you from having it as a outside of tree and, and run it mm. separately. Um, then you're, you're kind of back in the same position where you have this this thing over here. In the case we had kpatch build that was creating the, these relocations somewhere else outside the tree. That said, uh, I think integrating it in, into the kernel build is probably the hardest part for me uh, hmm. when I was working on that patch set. Um, it's so completely different than any live patch in kernel code. It's, it's amazing. Cool. <laughs> True. So what what would you do instead of integrating to k -Build? I mean, yeah. I mean, the it's a possibility to have KLFP convert hidden somewhere on the scripts slash, and you know, so to use it like mm, you you would build out of three life patch module with you would still need uh, that patch in mod post so that it would re, uh, ignore those unresolved warnings, and then you would run it manually. And okay, also like, just to it's build not the it's not great, but yeah. at, at the same time you can integrate it well to your some downstream build system easily. So that might also be an option. I don't have an opinion. If mm. cable, if cable integration works for for the maintainer, then yeah, that seems like a no brainer. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, we still have some minutes. Are there more questions or comments? Sure. Um, I think in the early slides you said this was based on the seventh version of the patch set and i was curious um did you look into changing any um any of the anything beyond the the, the macro that was generating the uh, relocation name i just removed all the loading of those uh, all, how is it called the symbols list you know all the this the, the scary part yeah yeah exactly exactly <laughs> okay. just made it symbol main file which is just checking you know this uh sections which we are I'm looking for with this prefix and then just modifying them and renaming the, those relocation sections to what I want. So I just kept like three functions there, you know, and that's all. Okay. Oh. In the course of going through and using the tool, did you have any thoughts on, um, I think in my experience, it was possible to generate relocations that end up in um, kernel or, or module sections like that like dot init or read only sections um 
and in the case of everybody's favorite live patching feature, the late module patching case, the module has already been loaded and finalized and protections on sections and the memory have been made and the KLP relocations show up with a potential way to modify things that I think Colonel had assumed would never be changed. Um, I remember asking these questions, I think, in some of the earlier versions and nobody had a great answer. Um, I think the shortest answer is I didn't think about it. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, so, so, so maybe, maybe this is for, this is a question for the tooling about the KLP code we've done because, you know what I mean? Right, so um, I, I could generate a module that, that builds with no issues with you know, macros, at least version seven. Um, and then when I loaded it um, uh, and, and these KLP re relocations were resolved, um, it might depend on the architecture. Um, in some cases, x86 would you know, be happy to, to update and, and set this, this KLP relocation. Um, but then PowerPC had a different idea. Like it thought, oh, you know, once I finalize that module, it's done. No one's ever touching this this uh, mm. in its section again. Um, to be fair, I mean, then I had to really, you know, think about how to artificially generate it. So mm. um, it might might not be like a real world case. But at the same time, you know, uh, the compiler will generate it. So I was able to crash kernel. Yeah, it's definitely something to be well. I was resorting to um, a an, an allow block list, sort of saying, "Well, I know that, that these are 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 sane relocation um, just to put in these sections. These are not." And um, and I guess in in my mind, I'm thinking from a K patch build perspective, where you have have patches and you kind of have a limited sort of set of, of these relocations that you're generating, you're not typically trying to specifically pick these problematic, you know, yep. like a read only kind of things. Okay. More questions? Okay. I'm um, just curious on the previous conversation you guys are having. Is this related to how, is this uh, the, the issue about uh, the compiler generating some code with the F live patching options and then OBG2 having some problem with, you know, is this, is this a problem in the, in the way the code is generated or is this more like some limitations because of the way we try to, you know, um, recreate the control flow graph and not being able to decipher where it, no, it's on the other side, which is. Yeah, it was, it was a problem with the code generation itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were some instructions left over that weren't possible to be executed. Okay. They were just kind of stray instructions. Um, it didn't affect anything really. It just made the function slightly bigger. And that confused OBJ tool because it thought maybe it lost track of the control flow because there's these instructions that were, weren't, right. uh, that can't be executed. Okay, so thanks a lot. Uh, now there's a coffee break, so see you in half an hour. Yeah.